help, okay? First of all, put it in standard form, because a lot of these, when they give you the problem, they purposefully put it in different orders. <clears throat> like this first one, this is not in standard form. Standard form puts the highest exponent first, and then you decrease all the way down to a constant term if you have one. Uh, then you're going to add like terms. We are going to look at subtraction. We're going to see how that changes things. And then this is one of the biggest mistakes. Your variables and your exponents do not change when you're adding and subtracting. Your variables and exponents stay the same. The only thing we're messing with are the coefficients. Okay, the only thing that we're going to be messing with are the coefficients. So, if I'm given this problem, here's what I think is the best way to organize it. Okay? I'm going to take that first expression in parentheses right here, and I'm going to write it in standard form, meaning my highest exponent is cubed, so this term, I'm going to write it first, negative 5 in cubed. If I had an n squared, that would come next. I don't. So then I go to the n. It has nothing in front of it, so that means I'm adding it. And then after a term like that, <clears throat> um, actually, you know what? Let me leave a blank space just in case my other part had a squared in it. Okay? It doesn't in this case, but we may run into that in the future. Okay? So leave a blank space for the n squared. Then we've got n, and then the constant term comes last. Now, this one is subtraction, so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to write the next term, the next um, expression under this one, but when I do it, since it's subtraction, I change all my signs. So, n cubed, positive n cubed is my highest power uh, term, but when I put it here, I'm changing its sign. It's going to be negative n cubed. If I had an n squared, that would go next. So I didn't have it in the first one. I don't have it in this one. 6n comes next. It was positive. I'm going to change its sign. So it's a negative 6n. And then my constant is positive 6, but i got to change its sign. So it's negative 6. So now at this point, I'm going to add. Okay, I'm not subtracting anymore because I already took care of that. I changed all the signs. So now I'm just going to look at it as adding. So negative 5 plus negative 1 is negative 6. The variable part does not change. I only combine the coefficients. Bless you. So that's negative 6 n cubed. I don't have an n squared. So then positive 1 minus 6 or positive 1 plus negative 6 is negative 5 n. And negative 7 plus negative 6 is negative 13. So here's our final answer. Now, you may be able to do it without lining it up like this, without changing the signs and looking at it as addition. And if you can, great. But I just know from my experience that the subtraction problems can trip people up. Um, <clears throat> and this really helps them line it up and make sure that we get everything. Um, we combine the correct common terms and, and everything like that. Okay? So if you can do it without doing this, fine. Okay, but I really do think this helps a lot of people. Okay, let's look at number two. This one is not really given to us in terms of just a straight up problem. It's kind of given to us in words. So it says if the sum of negative 2n plus 4 plus a n squared, or well, where this other variable came from, let's keep reading, and negative 4 n to the fourth minus 2 plus 6 n squared is negative 4 n to the fourth plus 8 n squared minus 2 n plus 2. What is a? Okay, so instead of having a coefficient right here like we would expect, we've got a variable, we've got to figure out what that coefficient would be. Now, I think it's it's kind of obvious, it's it's not super difficult, but let's set this up just like we did the other problem. Okay, keyword being the sum, so we're adding these two things together. So I'm gonna put the first one in standard form, my highest degree is squared, so my a n squared comes first, minus 2 n plus 4. My second expression has uh, n to the fourth, so that goes in front, negative 4 n to the fourth, uh, plus 6 n squared is my next highest, and then minus 2. We're adding these together, 
So negative 4 into the 4th, we've got that in the answer, okay? When we add these two right here, we've got 6 plus a, and that's supposed to equal 8. So can we figure out what a is? 2, okay? So yeah, I mean, that's a pretty, pretty straightforward there. We've already answered the question, um, but let's do confirm that the rest of this is correct. There's nothing to add to the negative 2 in, so you just bring it down. There it is in our problem, and 4 plus negative 2 is positive 2. There it is in our problem as well. So A equals 2. So it's one of those problems that looks kind of intimidating from the very beginning, but it's really not that bad. When you understand that all you're doing is adding the coefficients together, so if the question is, uh, here's the A, and it equals 8, and the other one is 6. Well, what do I add 6 to get to 8? All right? Um, so they're really, they're really not that bad. But they put it in that word form, and it people get thrown. It's really not that complicated. Okay? But what if we've got multiple operations? This last one. Ooh, we've got a lot of stuff going on here. Okay? So, um, first of all, I see that this one is subtraction. And this one is addition. But remember, we just turn subtraction into addition by changing all of our signs. Uh, now, before I start setting this up, I want to see what my highest power is. It looks like it's to the fifth. Okay, so I'm going to leave a space there because my first expression here does not have a fifth power in it. Okay, so I'm going to leave me a space there at the beginning, and then I'm going to start writing it in standard form. Negative 5x to a fourth, negative 3x cubed, I don't have an x squared, leave a space for it, uh, plus 3x, plus 2. Now my second expression here, it does have a fifth power. Okay, and remember I'm changing all my signs when I write it down. So negative 7x to the fifth becomes positive 7x to the fifth. 5x to the fourth becomes negative 5x to the fourth. I don't have a cubed, I don't have a squared. I've got negative 2x, so I change its sign, so that becomes positive 2x. And then my constant is positive 6, so I change the sign and it becomes negative 6. The last one is addition, so I'm not changing any signs, I'm just going to fix my order. Negative 9x to the fifth, I don't see any to the fourths. I've got negative 6x cubed. No squares, plus 10x, and a negative 8. So I'm going to add, I'm just adding my, my coefficients here. 7 plus negative 9 is negative 2x to the fifth. You can do this in your calculator. Okay, I'm just doing it in my head. Uh, negative 5 plus negative 5, be careful with this one, it's not 0. Negative 5 plus negative 5 is negative 10x to the fourth. Uh, negative 3 and negative 6 is negative 9. X cubed, we don't have a squared in any of them. 3 plus 2 plus 10 is 15x. And 2 plus negative 6 is negative 4 plus negative 8 is negative 12. So here is our final answer. So again, if you can go through and pick out all the like terms and remember to change your signs when, when appropriate, go for it. But I really think that if you organize it like this, you're, you're going to avoid some uh, careless mistakes. Okay, and again, let me remind you, variables and their exponents do not change. If it's x to the fifth here, it's going to be x to the fifth in your answer. You don't change anything about the variables at this time. Yes, sir. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, and I'm just lining it up this way so I make sure that I get all the pieces and I'll be safe. Okay, so all we're doing is adding the coefficients. That's it. Okay. It's very, very simple. It just looks complicated because of all the variables. All right. <laughs>